Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. First, let me introduce our research group. I'm Dorothea studying international relations at King's College London, and I'm joined by Mutas, who has a degree in nuclear engineering from Jordan University of Science and Technology, and Leila, who has pursued public international law at Algiers One University. Our research topic is the establishment of nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East as the first milestone for regional peace. Our policy recommendation is to establish a zone starting with the Arab League, followed by Iran and Israel. We suggest that the zone will be a great starting point and the milestone in trust building, and it will help to resolve conflict in other areas. In this short video, we provide some background information, present key stakeholders, and one policy recommendation out of three policy options. First, I will outline the key moments regarding the proposal of the zone. In 1968, the MPT was signed in, uh, in which Article 7 allowed the creation of regional disarmament treaties. Then, in 1974, the idea of Middle East nuclear weapon free zone was first proposed by Iran and Egypt. Afterwards, several MPT conferences took place, but the proposal on the formation of the zone have never translated into action. The lack of progress on the issue can be explained by looking at the main stakeholders' divergent beliefs and the lack of trust among them. Hello everyone, I am Mataz and I want to talk about the stakeholders. First, the main stakeholders are the Arab countries who have been the most active advocate of the Middle East in nuclear weapon free zones since its inception. They agree that Israel should act first, but lately Gulf states have increasing concerns over Iran. Second, Iran signed the NPT in 1975, renouncing any plan to acquire in nuclear weapons but develop a substantial breakout capability, which is precisely what the GCPOA was intended to first of all. First of all. Third, Israel is both the principal target of the zone and its main critic. It says progress on this zone cannot be created until peace is achieved. The United States, UK, and Russia are the co-sponsor of the 1995 Middle East Resolution. Consequently, they recognize that the zone would contribute to regional security, but they have not demonstrated any real engagement. Hello, this is Lei. So we propose three policy options on the establishment of the nuclear weapon free zone. The first policy advocates for the regional expansion of the zone, starting with the Arab countries, followed by Iran, dependent on its re-engagement with the GCPOA, and Israel, dependent on its change of perception of security after the binding disarmament of its rival, rivals in the region. If successful, nuclear arms race would be diminished, which could boost the regional social economic development. However, the limits of, it, of this proposal is the uncertainty around Iran's and Israel's willingness to enter the zone. As a second policy, which is mainly advocated by Israel, that uh, asks to put the arms control and disarmament issues in the broader context of regional security, it perceives the nuclear weapon free zone as a regional event that should be be discussed only as one of several topics. This policy option primarily promotes risk reduction and confidence building by a series of steps, such as the creation of the nuclear test-free zone, as well as other parallel conflict resolution tracks, such as the Palestinian question. If successful, it could eventually make both Israel and Iran more forthcoming on discussing their nuclear and missile programs. However, Israel would oppose the idea of of including the Palestinian case. And the recognition of Israel would be a sticking point for some states in the region. Moreover, Arabs perceive Israel's strategy as a manifestation of its long corridor and procrastination tactics. As a policy number three, we propose the integration of the countries of the region into other existing nuclear weapon free zones, either the Central Asian or the African nuclear weapon free zone, complemented with the creation of a Gulf nuliar weapon free zone that will inhibit the proliferation of nuclear weapons within the Persian Gulf and beyond. With this integration approach, the stalemate of the creation of the Middle East nuclear weapon free zone can be overcome, though the feasibility of this idea will not depend only on the will of the states concerned in the region, but also of the regional states of the existing zones. 
Our final recommendation is policy option one that proposes the establishment of the zone in a carefully phased way that progressively allows trust and confidence to grow while maintaining the actor's security needs by various measures. Some key provisions of the treaty will consist of the adherence to the shared verification system, guaranteed security assurance of nuclear weapon states, and the prohibition of storing or deploying nuclear weapons within the zone. The greatest limit to our solution is that the feasibility of arms control without addressing all the major causes of insecurity in the region is uncertain. However, we believe that this is the right time for regional actors to take responsibility to achieve lasting peace in times of US disengagement in the Middle East, Iran's nuclear progress through GCPOA, and improving ties between Gulf countries and Iran, and Israel and the Arabs through Abraham Accords. Contrary to the other proposed policy options, our final recommendation is a solution that comes from the key stakeholders in the region themselves and is enforced by their cooperatively created treaty. Thank you for listening.